The process of digestion. We eat various types of food that have to pass through the same digestive tract. Naturally, the food has to be broken down to the smallest particles that exist in nature, such as sugar, amino acids, fatty acids, glycogen, etc. Digestion in mouth. Digestion begins in the mouth by crushing the food with our teeth. The lining of the digestive canal is soft, and the food is made wet for its smooth passage by a watery fluid called saliva secreted by three pairs of salivary glands. The food we ingest is complex, it has to be broken into smaller molecules. This is done with the help of biological catalysts called enzymes. The saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down starch, a complex molecule, into simple sugar. The food is mixed thoroughly with saliva and moved around the mouth while chewed by the tongue. Movement of food to the stomach The mouth opens in the esophagus a tube from the mouth to the stomach. Lining of the canal has muscles that contract rhythmically, peristaltic movement, to push the food downward. These peristaltic movements occur all along the gut. The stomach is a large organ with muscular walls that expands when food enters, situated on the left side just below the ribs. Secretion It secretes hydrochloric acid, pH 1-1.4, gastric juice and mucus. Hydrochloric acid creates an acidic medium that facilitates the action of the enzyme in gastric juice and kills bacteria and other microorganisms. The mucus protects the inner lining of the alimentary canal stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions. Leading to the acidity drug used to cure it is antacid or gastric ulcer treated by pantop etc. Gastric juice contains three enzymes gastric lipase, amylase, and pepsin. They break down lipids, carbohydrates, and proteins in an acidic medium. The food from the stomach is regulated by a sphincter muscle which releases it in small amounts into the small intestine. Intestine. From the stomach, the food now enters the small intestine. This is the longest part of the alimentary canal fitted into a compact space because of extensive coiling. The length of the small intestine differs in animals depending on the food. Herbivores, grass eaters, have a longer intestine to allow the cellulose to be digested. Meat eaters, carnivores, have a short, small intestine. Complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats occurs in the small intestine. The medium of digestion is basic. Bile juice secreted from the liver makes the food basic and helps fat digestion by emulsification, breaking them down into smaller globules and increasing enzyme action. If bile secretion is insufficient, it causes wounds called peptic ulcers. Enzymes secreted are Intestinal juice The walls of the small intestine contain glands that secrete intestinal juice. The pancreatic juice enzyme is secreted by the pancreas, which secretes insulin hormone. Thus, all food is broken down into its units as carbohydrates to glucose and fructose, fats to glycerol and fatty acids, proteins to amino acids, etc., with the help of various enzymes present in the two juices in an alkaline medium. Appendix It is an organ at the junction of the two intestines. It is an organ for cellulose digestion. It is large in herbivorous animals and small in others. If infected in humans, it causes appendicitis, a painful disease. It's a vestigial organ in humans. Absorption the inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger-like projections called villi, which increase the surface area for absorption. The villi are richly supplied with blood and lymph vessels that take the absorbed food to every cell of the body. The unabsorbed food is sent into the large intestine, where its wall absorbs more water from this material and helps in the synthesis of vitamin K and Vit B12 with the help of bacteria E. coli. The rest of the material is removed from the body via the anus. The exit of this waste material is regulated by the anal sphincter. Dental caries or tooth decay 
causes the gradual softening of enamel and dentine. It begins when bacteria acting on sugars produce acids that soften or demineralize the enamel. Masses of bacterial cells, together with food particles, stick to the teeth to form dental plaque. Saliva cannot reach the tooth surface to neutralize the acid as plaque covers the teeth. Brushing the teeth after eating removes the plaque before the bacteria produce acids. If left untreated, microorganisms may invade the pulp, causing inflammation and infection. See video on nutrition part 1 and 2.